we started a lead dream home contest as an alternative learning style and we found it to be a great motivator. It starts at the end of winter break when students have the least motivation and it ends at the end of February. The motivator is the winners receive a laptop and in a few months it's amazing how much these students actually learn. This is Stephanie Kwame from the CAD Academy. The as students learn all about leadership in energy and environmental design and the different lead categories and they have to include all of that information in when they turn in or submit their project. And uh, the ones that won touched on every one of the categories and said how their um, project complied with that. They also uh, submitted a construction drawing. They uh, did a rendering and they also did an essay. And we're going to go over the essay and uh, some renderings quickly today. It would be impossible to go over all of them because there was hundreds, but we're going to go over a few highlights of some of them. And uh, they also had to learn a commercial grade building information modeling package called Archicad. And so within a short period of time, they produced these amazing projects. And when you hear what the students say, it's not only a reflection of the students, but it's also a reflection of the teaching skills that we've got out there, the great instructors that we've got out there. This was our first place winner. His name is Gabriel. And he uh, learned about building uh, styles and a whole bunch of things. He says this Mediterranean home is both attractive and appealing while being safe for our environment. It's located in uh, southern Florida on a saltwater canal and uses six wind turbines for energy. To take advantage of the Florida sunshine, it also includes solar panels and goes on from there. Every student <clears throat> went to the internet to uh, learn about energy efficiency, to spec out specific e equipment, or um, uh, ranges or refrigerators and window types, walls, etc. So all of these were well researched. This is Merrick Smith. He was our second place winner and he really did uh, fill in the criteria for having a lead house. He banked his house into the earth which would help cool it by natural methods and he said overall my home is built to maximize energy efficiency the average house recycles air in the house eight to nine times in a certain period of time. And then this efficient house reduces the recycle time down to two or four times. So you're not heating and cooling useless air. Um, this house also uh, with this minimalistic landscaping is uh, truly a great little elite home. Alex Day was the only one that actually told us his latitude and longitude and also one of the few that didn't use where he lived as a place to put his dream home. He said, located on an island in British Columbia as Indian Arm Lake, just 10 miles from downtown Vancouver, a city aiming to be the greenest city in the world by 2020, my house is positioned to take full advantage of the winter sun movement across the sky. And so we had to learn about a different um, climate, so to speak. This is Alex. And Alex said, my lead guest house is located in a rural area of southern Louisiana. From flooring to the exterior, the choices made can make a home more eco-friendly and the life of the occupant healthier. So he learned what is in the heart of our project. It's a beautiful guest house. Paul Cromer would have been a winner, but they, the uh, judges who are no, uh, none of the people from the CAD Academy judge, it's a team of uh, lead certified uh, experts, architects, and higher level um, educators. But um, they were concerned about egress in this house. But this was an amazing project. My design for this contest is a concept based off of several areas of history and architecture. First and foremost, we have Southwestern style of architecture, most prominent in the environment and materials used. It's amazing how well versed the students are. This house uses adobe and a lot of nice natural features. It was a, a great, great uh, submission. Pablo was probably the best at rendering that I've seen. He, he uh, sent us some great renderings and he has some very good ideas. A tribute to modern architecture, the house 
follows a concept of minimalism and is more artistic in nature but still functional. The roof has a garden terrace to produce fresh crops. These plants, thanks to a pulley system, can be transported to the second story to the kitchen. And these are just little excerpts from their essays. The essays are amazing. Mr. Owen says, I have learned that sustainability must be approached holistically. Every aspect of the design should reflect the goal from the building's material to efficient appliances. And he put his house on columns so that he would uh, not disturb the natural earth around it and added a lot of other features. It was a great um, submittal. Trevor put his house on over a river. The best architecture utilizes the most efficient technology without sacrificing aesthetics. In this home, photovoltaic panels charge VLA gel batteries for additional energy. Water turbines under the house ensure a steady intake of energy. And I know um, in the past in the south when they made a cloth down there, they used the water turbines before electricity to, to, uh, uh, to produce energy. And uh, kind of Frank Lloyd Wrightish on a uh, river. Great design. This is Mr. Santos. Location played a role in the design of this house. Placed near the mountains, eliminating the need for air conditioning, taking advantage of abundant rain. The roof is angled to water the native uh, grass and trees. And Mr. Santos knows this area well. It's in Hawaii. Marcus Vogt. Uh, submitted this drawing, and unfortunately I just have a uh, photo of the uh, rendering, but it's an amazing Victorian, but it's all brand new. Since inspiration from this nostalgic home incorporates new technology into the building while retaining the flavor of the period was the design challenge. My solution was to conceal all aspects of lead and net zero design in an old gambrel roof, a barn. And basically, all of uh, the equipment ends up being in uh, the barn, even the panels on the other side. Well, this looks like a traditional uh, Victorian, but yet it's up to date and very energy efficient. It's a great design. Jordan Field learned a lot. Throughout this process, I found amazing new and creative ways of making a home more environmentally friendly. This home incorporates, incorporates a VRHRV heat recovery ventilation system and a heat recovery recovered drain, among other energy saving features. He came up with some very unique ideas. This is Mr. Stephen, and this is a, uh, a solar chimney has been used for many years. It's a, a like a, a, a traditional way, and it's great to see it incorporated in a design. A solar ch a chimney is seen in the front of my house as an effective and natural way uh, for passive cooling, so no electricity is needed for air conditioning. The inside of the home is sealed tightly. The kitchen, even the vent in the kitchen, uh, has um, is vent free, and it recycles the air back into the house. I like the uh, features. This is jasmine. The exterior walls are made out of high volume fly ash concrete to suit a Florida home. This is a byproduct of coal burning, uh, burning power plants that, in the past, a majority had had gone to landfills. By using this, it limits greatly and reduces the amount of emissions in the mix. So it's basically good for you, good for, uh, for the interior of the house as well. Alex is probably the only one that brought up price. He said this would be expensive to make. Located on a beach, a highlight of this house is a second floor greenhouse, which enables for growing fresh fruits and vegetables. Efficient windows keep heat in and the cold air out, but also allow for opening all the doors and windows so he can create amazing airflow through the house when they need it because it's located on a beach. But that's a great idea. Have all of your, uh, uh, grow your own food. This is a really compact design. This is a great design. Leaving a small footprint was important in this design. This is ca this called for creativity and efficient use of space. Solar panels produce electricity for the home and lots of double pane windows let in lots of light. It was a very, uh, if you could see all of the house, like the back of the house as well, it has some real creativity in it. Here's a ninth grader that came up with some great ideas. I have learned that sustainability is not the same as being green. One example would be a greenhouse is eco-friendly while sustainable, a sustainable house would be energy efficient. And he basically 
built a house that was energy efficient, and since it was in a desert area, he found ways to recycle and save the water. And he, his panels move with the sun. Anyway, it's great, great design. This is very modernistic. Sustainability is a goal, Tucker Jensen says, and it may be far too late. That is why this home has a composting toilet, a geothermal generator, a greenhouse, and methods for producing energy via biomass and many more. He's only in the ninth grade. And what a, a very unique and awesome design. And this one is created. My design is located in the Redwood Forest in Northern California and runs on hydroelectricity, a complex filtration unit and reusable materials. I have a trail path so you can enjoy nature without having to use a car. And uh, that is a unique and creative design as well. So you can see the students in a short period of time learn so much and you can see that these are, students are very well versed. They did a lot of research and it is really a credit to their instructors, uh, the quality of their projects. Looking forward to seeing some uh, new ones this year. Thanks for listening.